All right, so here's our binary search tree class. Some stuff's already written for us. We have a reference to the root of the tree. It's a node, just like we had previously with all of our other tree stuff. There's a node class down here that we're going to add some code to here in a minute. Um, there's several methods we're going to implement. We're going to implement a constructor. We're eventually going to implement the add method. We're going to focus on the find method first. Um, we'll implement the remove method and then eventually a, a print. A um, couple different ways of printing. So let's kind of go through this together. So let's do kind of like the underlying code we need first before we jump into um, the find method. So in our inner class, which is our node, we need um, a few data members. These will be very similar to what we had in our binary tree from last week. We're gonna have public, but instead of making this just of type object, we're gonna make it of type comparable. Okay, because it's it can't just be an object, it actually has to implement the comparable interface so that we can make sure um, to insert new elements in our tree in the right place. So we'll call that data like we've done before, and then we'll have a reference to our left and right children, just like we had before with our binary tree itself. So these are the three instance variables we need for each node. They're exactly the same as the binary tree, except our data, instead of being of type object, is of type comparable. We're going to get some warnings here because comparable is a generic type. And so it'd be preferred to actually have this be like comparable angle bracket T and our node to be a generic and our tree to be a generic. We're not writing all of these as generics because we're just trying to keep things a little bit simple for today, just like we've been doing all unit. All right, that's what the node looks like. Not too bad. So let's go all the way up and implement our um, find method. Well, actually, let's add a line in our constructor. Let's be explicit and say that we're going to set the root to null. So we start with an empty tree. Yes, root is already initialized to null, but um, that's OK. We're going to be explicit. So we're going to do find first. We're trying to find, we're trying to determine if this parameter, OBJ, the object of type comparable, is in the tree or not. This is very similar to what we call in the tree set, right? We want to see if the element is in the set and it just returns true or false. We're writing that method right now in the context of our binary search tree. Okay. So here's what it's going to look like. We need to keep track of where in the tree we are. The approach we're going to take here is going to be very similar to the future methods as well as we traverse our tree. So we're going to set the current node to the root. We're going to start at the root. And then we're going to search the binary search tree for the specified object. So we're going to have a while loop. We're going to keep searching as long as current is not equal to null. If current becomes null, that means we've made it all the way to off the leaf of a tree. The specified object isn't in our tree, so we will return false. Um, but if current is, is not equal to null, we'll keep searching. All right. So we are, let's, we're going to start, for example, at Juliet. The first thing we need to do is compare the specified object to the current node's data and see if they're equal, less than, greater than, things like that. So let's do that. So let's do the comparison first. So I'm going to create a local variable called the difference, and I'll say obj, the specified object, dot compare to. We know we can invoke the compare to method because the parameter is of type comparable, so it has to implement that method. And we're going to compare this to current.data. So we're going to compare these two, the two elements. If the difference is zero, we found it. We're done. We return true. We're finished. Man, I'm having trouble typing today. There we go. Else if the difference is less than zero, so this is where I always have to check myself. 
back in AP computer science and still in software engineering. If difference is less than zero, that means object is less than current dot data. So if the object, the thing we're searching for is less than current that data, we need to go left, right? So looking at our picture again, if we're searching for Harry and Harry is less than Juliet, we need to go to the left child. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna say current equals current dot left. Otherwise, whoa. Diff must be greater than zero, so we need to go right. And again, this um, warning is because we're not using generics. We're going to ignore that stuff for today. There is the entire find method. Not so bad. Questions about finding an element in a binary search tree. All right, that was the easy method. On to the next method. When we insert into the binary search tree, um, we have to be, it, it gets, it, well, it's not that bad. So inserting, we're kind of building our way up here. Sorry, I'm trying to think of how best to explain this in sequences in a way that makes sense. Um, when we're inserting, it's a lot like finding an element, but instead of finding if the element is in the tree or not, we're just finding where we need to put it, okay? So for example, if this is our binary search tree and we're inserting Romeo, we look at the root and we say, does Romeo come before or after Juliet? It comes after, so we go to the right child. We say, does Romeo come before or after Tom? It comes before, so we go to the left child. If there is no left child, if it's null, then we found the right place to insert Romeo. So basically with the insertion, we're just gonna search through the tree until we end up with, um, until we find like the child that's null and that's where we're gonna insert it. Meaning we're gonna make a new node, we're gonna set the data, we're gonna put it in the tree there, okay? So when we're inserting into a binary search tree, we're always inserting as a leaf. Uh, no, there always will be a spot because we'll just keep searching through the tree and eventually we're gonna get to a leaf and we're gonna either make a new left child or a new right child. So we'll eventually get there. Yeah, uh, hold, so even, yeah, eventually at some point we wanna even it out. Hold that thought for, till the end of class. <laughs> no, but you're absolutely correct. All right, so let's see what this looks like from a code perspective. It's going to look familiar, okay? So, um, Find is very straightforward. So we wrote it right here in the binary search tree class. Um, add gets a little bit more complicated. So we're going to delegate the responsibility for adding a node to the binary search tree to the node class itself, okay? This is the same design, the same technique we used um, with the size method. You did the count nodes with one child on Friday or the count leaf nodes, I can't remember. Um, very similar approach here, which will lead to some, some recursion. Um, anyway, here's our add method. We know we're going to need to make a new node. So let's get that out of the way right now. We're gonna make a new node and we're gonna initialize all the instance variables of that node just to be explicit. Data is gonna be set equal to the specified object, the specified element, OBJ new node dot left, I'm gonna explicitly make it null just because I like to be explicit with these things for left and right. There is a special case we need to handle. If our tree is empty, um, we need to check that. 
So if this dot root equals null, the tree is empty, and all we have to do is say this dot root equals new node, and we're done. Okay, that's our special case. In the case that the tree is not empty, um, this is where we're going to demote the responsibility for adding the node to the node class itself. And as you might imagine by now, we're going to do this recursively. So we're going to call the add node method on the root node of the tree, and we're going to pass the new node as a parameter. So basically, if there's already a root, we're going to say, hey, root, this is up to you. You figure out where to insert this new node. We're done. So similar approach as to what we've taken before um, with, our, with our tree algorithms. So let's write the add node method. So we're going to scroll down, back down to the node class. I've already written the Java doc and the method header for us. So the add node method inserts a new node as a descendant of this node. And as you might guess, this is going to be recursive. So we're going to, in some ways, recreate the find algorithm we just wrote. So we're going to start by calculating what's the difference between the new node's data. Remember, it's very important to distinguish between the node and the element, right? So here we want to compare elements. So we want to do new node.data dot compare to, and we're going to compare it to the data of this node, the node we're currently evaluating where to insert. If the difference is less than zero, we need to go left, okay? But this is a little bit more sophisticated than what we wrote with find, because if the left child is null, we just found where to insert our new node. And we can just say left equals new node, and we are done. But if the left child is not null, we need to basically say, oh, hey, left child, here's a new node to insert. It's up to you to figure out where it goes. So we're just going to call the add node method on that left node, and we'll pass along new node. So hey, left child, here's a new node. You figure out where it goes. And we know that when this method returns, the node has been inserted. OK, well, what if diff is greater than 0? It's going to look really similar. So else if diff is greater than 0, if the right child is null, we're done. Right equals new node. Otherwise, we delegate the responsibility to the right child to figure out where to add the new node into the tree. So this code is extremely similar to find, except in each case for diff being less than zero and greater than zero, we're now checking if the corresponding child is null. And if it is null, that's where we insert the new node. Otherwise, instead of like looping around, we just do this recursively and we tell the left child, hey, you figure out where to put this node. I'm done. You may have noticed I wrote this as an if else if in terms of diff less than zero, diff greater than zero, and not an if else. Why? Why would an if else not be appropriate here for a binary search tree, especially when we're using our binary search tree for our tree set? Yeah. Say again, I'm sorry. Yeah, and if diff is zero, and this is a tree set, what is the behavior of a tree set when diff is zero? There, you say there shouldn't be duplicates? Yeah, 
there shouldn't be any duplicates, right? So if we add the same element to a tree set multiple times, nothing happens, right? It just doesn't, we don't get duplicates, we don't get errors, we don't get exceptions. It just is like, okay. And that's what this code is going to do. If diff is zero, this is false. This is false. And so we just return. We're done. We didn't add it anywhere. Okay. Cool. All right. Now for the hard part. What if we remove a node? Okay. Removal is, is what makes this, this ch challenging. Let's look, we're going to look at three different cases. Here's the first case. The first case is not too bad. We search through the tree to find the node to remove. If that node is a leaf, not too bad. We need to keep track of who that node's parent is. So we're going to have to write, like, have some local variable that's going to keep track of the, the parent of the node we're currently comparing to. Um, but once we know what that parent is, um, if we find the node and it's a leaf, we just set in this case, the right child of the parent to null. Not, not too bad. Let's look at case two. Case two here, the node to be removed has only one child, okay, not two children. It has only one child. And so the way we can solve this problem is we can be like, okay, we got to get rid of this node, but we don't want to get rid of the entire the rest of the subtree. We just want to get rid of this node. But we know that everything in this subtree comes after parent because it's all part of that right subtree. So we can instead have parent right linked to this single child and just get rid of this guy. And that will solve it as well. We're going to come to case three later. We're just going to do a couple cases at a time. So let's find this remove method. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. All right, first step is we need to actually find the node to be removed. And so we need to, uh, several local variables to keep track of stuff. One is going to be called to be removed. And this eventually will be set to the node to be removed, but we're going to start by just initializing it to the root. Okay. And then we're going to keep changing the value of to be removed as we go, um, as we search through the tree. As I mentioned, when we looked at the diagram, we also need to keep track of the parent. And I'm going to initialize that to null because the root has no parent. So that's a thing. Um, and then we need some sort of like a Boolean status variable to know if we've actually found the node. Because maybe we're asked to remove a node that's not in the tree. And if you think back to the behavior of the tree set, or just sets in general, if you try to remove an element that's not in the set, it just returns. Just returns. Uh, you don't get an exception or anything like that. So, all right, let's go searching. So we want to keep searching for the node to remove as long as we haven't found it and as long as to be removed is not equal to null. If at some point to be removed is set to null, that means we've traversed the entire tree and we never found the thing we're looking for, in which case we just stop to. All right, that's okay. All right, so we got to do our difference. So we're going to create that local variable diff again. And we're going to say object, the object we want to remove, the element we want to remove, compare to to be removed dot data. Oop, I don't know why I put brackets there. Sorry. <laughs> um, if the difference is zero, yay, we found it. Found equals true. Okay. That will be our, our sentinel variable. That's going to cause our while loop to stop executing, and then we can go on and actually do the removal. If the difference isn't zero, we need to go left or right. So we're going to have an else case here. Before we traverse left or right, we need to keep track of the parent. So we're going to set parent equal to to be removed. 
because we're about to change to be removed to either the left child or the right child. If that difference is less than zero, meaning the node to be removed is less than the current node, I phrase that in a poor way, which means the node we're trying to remove is less than the current node. I shouldn't have used that variable name. Um, we need to go left. So to be removed is gonna be set to the left child. Else, to be removed is gonna be set equal to the right child. We're gonna go right. This, either of these two statements might result in to be removed being assigned to null. And that's okay because that will also terminate our while loop and we'll know that we're done. So here's our search. Very, very similar to what we wrote for find with the addition of we're keeping track of the parent of the node we're searching for. When this while loop is finished, let's see if we, if we didn't find the node we're looking for, we're just gonna return. So that means we, we traverse the entire tree, we didn't find the element um, specified by the parameter variable obj, so we just return. There's nothing to remove because the thing, the element wasn't in the tree. Otherwise, we, we did find it. We're gonna code case one and two together um, because it's, it's, it can be very similar. Let me explain more what that looks like. So in case two, we're gonna set parent.write to this node's only child, okay? In case one, we're gonna set parent.write to this node's left or right child, but they're both null. We're just gonna set parent.write to null. But we can code these as the same, we can combine case one and two, because in both cases, we're gonna set parent.write to some child of node to be removed, it's just that that value might be null. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna combine these two cases to keep the code a little bit more concise. So let's let's make that clear in our let's add a little comment here just saying this is for case one and case two. If to be removed dot left equals null or to be removed dot right equals null. So this means we, the node to be removed either has no children or only one child. That's what this conditional says. That's case one and two. We're gonna create a local variable called new child, which is gonna be the new child of the parent node. <laughs> I know that's a lot. And then we just have to decide what its value is. So we have two different cases. If, if the left child of the node to be removed is null, the new child of the parent will be the right. So we'll say new child equals to be removed dot right. Now in the case of case one, this assigns null to new child and that's okay. This is us combining these two things. Otherwise, if there is a left child, the new child is going to be that left child. And now we just have to clean up the parent. It is possible that the parent is null, so we better check. If the parent is null, then the root, meaning it was, we're removing the root of our tree, means we have a new root. So we have to set that to new child. That's a special case. Else we have to decide, go back to our picture here. We have to decide, are we removing the right child of the parent or the left child of the parent? Because we have to update either the right or the left reference appropriately. So we'll say else if, parent.left equals to be removed. 
Okay, we're removing if we're removing the parent's left child, parent dot left will now equal the new child. Otherwise, it must have been the right, and we'll say parent dot right equals new child. And if we make it through all of this, we're done. <laughs> okay, we successfully removed and cleaned up the parent, potentially the root of our tree to deal with this removal.